will just do a few reflections. I mean, I'm amazed that still so many people are around, but that has certainly to do with the quality of this meeting. So in a sense, this was the global sustainability village coming together, because when I talked in, uh, during the coffee breaks, people were impressed how international this debate is. Uh, it's not just about the German energy turn, or however you call it, this was a global perspective. And even persons who hold two passports, like Caio Cochvesa, was born in Rolandia in Brazil uh, and raised and is a Brazilian uh, uh, citizen as well as a German citizen. Uh, so, so we have this global perspective really here and, and, and that's a fantastic thing. Now, what I heard or what made a deep impression on me here is that yes, of course, we agree all that we cannot afford to deny that we are piling up debts on future generation. Fiscal debts, atmospheric debts, land use debts and so on. Now we know this and Nobel laureates uh, symposium has made this explicit time and again. But what I also heard here today is that we cannot afford to be depressed it's very important uh, because, of course, the challenges are towering and, and, and very demanding, but uh, there is no alternative to being courageous and to move forward. Uh. So I think that is a, a powerful message. Now, on the practicalities on this, you know, I do hope that this is not the end of an event. Yes, it is the end, and uh, there is Dinner served upstairs, I was told, but I have to tell you, you all deserve it, of course, and I hope some of you join us for further debates later on. It's the end of that day, but it's hopefully the beginning of a, of a process also. Talked about partnerships, and we deliberately chose this for the last panel, uh, and Kefi and Kai Onafas gave us uh, their thoughts on this. Uh, it's, uh, difficult target, but I'm sure, I mean, what could happen is the following one, and this could be instigated by the German Advisory Council, by national academies, what have you, a bottom-up process, so to speak, and I discussed it with Urban Reed, for example, over the phone just two days ago. You know, if you just look, if you go to climate negotiations, as I have done many, many times, too many times, I have to say, for my own yeah, health and my own psychological sanity, but uh, I somehow survived. Uh, but if you go to, to climate negotiations, you see, of course, so many deadlocks. Uh, I mean, nations quarrel over half a sentence, a comma, a full stop, whatever. In the end, your victories are just victories on paper, so to speak, uh, on tiny little clips of paper. Um, so this has to go on, of course. Uh, we have to work towards maybe a climate agreement in 2015, or as our Chinese colleagues said, let's not be, dep be depressed if it not, doesn't happen in 2015. It may happen whenever. At the same time, we have to move forward. Uh, but what we could do, what we could offer as a scientific community, as the community of experts, to start from bottom up, a parallel process, so to speak, as many have done, uh, and when I listen now to the things told today, how the French do it with mobility, how the Danish do it with phasing out uh, fossil fuels, uh, how the Indians try to sort of design new cities, while just across the border in China, they do it completely differently again. Uh, and practices are not shared, really. Uh, I mean, we need a process, actually, if we agree on global targets, and I think we can agree on them, uh, we have to monitor first the various respective regional pathways and strategy. We are very, very diverse, actually. Uh, there are just a few laws of physics, how you generate energy and how you store it, but the regional diversities are tremendous. So in a second step, we could share best practice, this, but even more important, we should identify worse practices, eh? because there are worse practices all over the globe. Just relieving them could bring us 
very much forward. And for that, you have to talk to each other. Huh? And as I said, this can be done by national academies. And then, of course, the next step would be identify win-win situation, innovation partnerships, research that can only be done together. So if you remove the worst practices, and if you identify the best coalition options, then you can add it all up, and you may end up in a second best world, or even a third best world, but a much better world than we would face if we just do business as usual. Huh? So I can imagine that through this event today, we could start such a process, bottom up. The, the, the scientific community is already completely globalized. Huh? When I talk about physics to an Indian or a Chinese or American, we do not quarrel on the fundamentals anymore. That has been settled a long, long time ago, and let me close, actually, uh, when I talk about the fundamentals, I, I give you a quote from my favorite scientist, Albert Einstein, again. And uh, because he was a man with a lot of humor, actually. But before I say this, I wanted to just remind us all that we heard what we heard this morning, or actually this afternoon at the beginning of his stay, was, I think, a historic speech by our chancellor that was a brilliant exposition of her ideas. And I think a good lesson for all those people who say, well, the German government isn't interested anymore in climate protection. Quite to the contrary. So let's all remember that. So I close with Albert Einstein, who said, for example, I quoted him in the beginning, there are two things that are infinite, namely, one is the human stability, and the other is the universe. But he's added, he's not quite sure about the universe yet. So that's the first one. But at the same time, he said, the biggest resource, we talked a lot about resource efficiency today, the biggest resource of all for shaping the future is fantasy, because fantasy is unlimited. So let's move the world towards a world which we may call Fantasy Unlimited, and I thank you all for being here.